Next up, we have the bleed controls. Now, in the real world, a kit piece signal is picked up by all the microphones around the kit. If I hit a cymbal, the sound will be heard bleeding into other microphones, for example, the snare drum mic. For technical reasons, BFD2 can only bleed into the kick and snare drum microphones. And here's where we can change the behavior of those bleed signals. If I choose my low tom, it currently has kick and snare bleed set to on. If I go over to my mixer and hit the tom, you will see the tom signal bleeding into the kick and snare channels. If I go back to my inspector now and turn the kick and snare bleed off, you'll see that there's no bleed signal there anymore. The third parameter you've got is direct. With direct, the bleed signal from the tom is mixed into its own direct channel instead of the snare drum and kick drum direct channels. So you still get the effect of the bleed in the mix, but it allows you to keep all your sources completely separated. Finally on here, we have two trim controls, which just allows you to alter the volume of the bleed signals. Moving down, we have the articulation controls. Here, we can make various changes to individual articulations within a hit. If I choose my snare drum, and go to this drop down menu here, you'll see that I can select all the different articulations of the snare drum. If I move to the kick drum, those articulations are reflected there. Next to that, we have an audition strip, which just allows you to audition the currently selected articulation. If I want to audition the side stick of the snare, it's easy to do. The all articulations entry in the menu means that all these controls will affect all the articulations in the particular kit piece at the same time. The first parameter I can tweak is articulation trim. This allows me to change the volume of a particular articulation uh, in the current kit piece. My current groove has got a hi-hat with a half shank at the end of the bar. and I've decided that this half shank is not loud enough. Let's take a listen. By selecting the half shank and moving the articulation trim, you can hear that half shank getting louder without it affecting the rest of the hi-hat. The next parameter is velocity to amplitude. This allows us to adjust the amount of dynamic range controlled by the velocity. At lower settings, the velocity will have less effect on the amplitude. At higher settings, it'll be more. Velocity to pitch. This varies the pitch depending on the incoming velocity. Generally, this is always set to 0%, but it can be useful for some things. For example, when a drummer plays a closed tip hi-hat, as he plays harder, he leans on the pedal a bit more and the pitch of the hi-hat increases slightly. We can use this control to emulate that. Make sure we've got our closed tip selected. just put a little bit on and you can hear the closed tip just changing in pitch ever so slightly. Obviously we can use it for more extreme effects as well. Next is velocity to damping. This control works in addition to the damping amount control up here and controls the amount of damping depending on the incoming velocity. You can set this so higher velocity hits are more damped or less damped. The final control is velocity randomization. This controls the amount of randomization applied to the selected articulation when using BFD2's humanization features. It's a useful way to control randomization for a particular articulation. With the slider at zero, randomization will be turned off for that articulation.
And that's it, the Kit Piece Inspector. <laughs>